Am I the a-hole stories? Am I the a-hole for not wanting to leave my own apartment? I'll keep this vague to avoid recognition since I believe the party involved actually use Reddit. I'm a 28-year-old male, and I've been friends with my roommate, a 25 female, ever since we were babies. Our families were neighbors and we grew up together. She's like a little sister to me and has always been. After she graduated college, she moved to the same city I currently work in, and since she couldn't find an apartment close enough to where she worked, I told her she could live with me. We'd share bills and become roommates. We never really had problems or fights as we known each other for so long. However recently, things taken a strange turn. She got involved with someone from her work. The guy seemed to be a nice guy. I only ever spoken to him three times as they usually keep to her room. But he was very friendly, and honestly, I was happy she found someone who seemed that nice. After a few months of their relationship, she sent me a text saying she needed to talk with me. I figured there might be something wrong with the apartment. It's not uncommon for things to break. But I was wrong. When I got home, we started to talking. It's too long to write everything, so I'll just summarize. She told me that while she enjoyed living with me, her boyfriend was starting to get jealous of his woman living with another man. At first, I raised an eyebrow, but thought that this kind of thing isn't uncommon. So I was like, oh, it's fine. Just let me know when you plan on leaving, hope you two find a good place. However, apparently I was wrong. She told me that she wasn't leaving. She said that it was impossible to find somewhere closer to her work, and that she was hoping I would let her take the apartment instead, since my work wasn't close and all that. Thing is, I really love my place. It's close to the gym, to the grocery store, to pretty much everything. I'm not gonna just leave my place because of something so stupid as this, and I told that flat out that it wasn't going to happen. She got visibly upset and started to rant about me being an egotistical a-hole. That I didn't have empathy to put myself in her shoes. This happened a few days ago, and she shut herself in her room, only ever leaving to go to work or to pick up her boyfriend, who became really unfriendly to me after that. Now, usually I can be an a-hole, but I don't think this was one of these times. So I thought I would ask for Reddit's verdict. Am I really such an a-hole? Edit, for those who have asked, her name isn't on the lease as I lived in the same place for two years before she moved in. Now for the top comments. Let me get this straight, you have known her for over two decades. You welcomed her into your home, and now she expects you to leave so she can live with her jealous boyfriend that she's just gotten on with? Not the a-hole bro, she is. Big time. Look at how she treats someone who is like a sibling. I'm super curious as to why she's not going over to her boyfriend's place? Why don't the friend and her boyfriend find a place of their own, rather try to kick someone out who was nice enough to let her move another place? Theory, she told boyfriend it was her place, and she was being a great friend letting OP crash there. Now she's caught out in the light. Oh my god, not the a-hole. She can pack her entitlement up with her things and move out. It's your apartment. You did her the favor. The freaking audacity, I swear. Don't be surprised when she reappears on your doorstep wanting to move back in. When living with a boyfriend doesn't work out, she sounds less than mature. Just say no. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. That's some A5 waggy level entitlement, right there. She said that it was impossible to find somewhere closer to her work, and that she was hoping I would let her take the apartment instead, since my work wasn't close and all that. Wait, so she's not even moving in with the boyfriend? He just wants you gone? She didn't live by the phrase brothers before hoes, it seems. She willingly throws her brothers away for the boyfriend. That's a 5 wagyu topped with black truffle type of entitlement. Not the a-hole, it was your place first, and she's the one having an issue with the living situation. If her new boyfriend has such a problem with her living with you, then he should offer her to move in with him. What she ends up doing is totally her choice, but you shouldn't be forced to move, and I think she's being incredibly unreasonable. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for telling a pregnant girl to find a new flat? I, 20 female, live with 5 other girls, 5 of us have already signed a lease to live together again next year, we are all currently in our second year of uni. Since the lease signing, she's become extremely mean, and honestly just a bully to 3 of us, and a massive bully. I feel she has shown her true colors, now she knows she has somewhere to live next year. She has also had her boyfriend staying in our house since November, he's a misogynist, racist, homophobe, and all round horrible person. 
Multiple times we have asked, and now told, her to make him leave, but she refuses as it is her house too. None of us feel comfortable with him in the house. Recently Beth has announced she is expecting a baby, and that the pregnancy was planned. She's told us that her, the baby, and her boyfriend, will be living with us next year and we have no choice in the matter. Out of the four of us she is living with next year, three of us have said no, and that she needs to find a new flat for next year. One says we need to support her and can't kick her out. Next year is our final year, we'll need to be able to concentrate on our dissertations, essays, revision, etc., which we won't be able to do with a newborn. Also, she has told us that she expects us to change our social lives to fit around the baby, which is just not acceptable. If restrictions are lifted and life does return to normal, we will want to be able to enjoy what little time we have left at uni, not be in bed by 8 p.m. on a Saturday. Finally, student lets are weird, in that each room can legally only house one person, and everyone living there permanently must be a student, so we could all get in trouble for her plan. She has chosen to change the terms of our housing next year by bringing two more people in without consulting us. Her, and the other girl's argument, and why we may be the a-holes, is that she has as much a right to the house as we do. Also, that as her friends, we should support her and not cause her extra stress during her pregnancy. Apparently, we are as good as making her homeless, there are plenty of one or two bedroom flats for rent. So, am I the a-hole for telling her she won't be living with us next year? and causing her extra stress during her pregnancy, or is she the a-hole for planning a pregnancy, then expecting all of us to change our lives to suit her. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Beth's baby and boyfriend are not on the lease and is not a tenant. Inform your landlord of the illegal tenant. Not the a-hole. Her, and the other girl's argument, and why we may be the a-holes, is that she has as much a right to the house as we do. Well. Her boyfriend sure as hell doesn't have any right to it. Make a copy of the lease. Her boyfriend comes over, OP and other roommates tell him to leave. Evil roommate says no. OP and roommates call the police. Police arrive, roommates ask the police to remove the boyfriend. Show police a copy of the lease, boyfriend not on lease, hopefully police escort him out. OP absolutely needs to let the landlord know about boyfriend's illegal occupancy. Let landlord know that she expects to also move a baby into the house. Ask landlord about what your options are. I would be interested if the rest of you could get out of the lease and leave her with the full rent. The landlord might figure out that it would be better for him slash her to get rid of the troublesome tenant and keep the rest. If they can't get evil roommate out, I would make her life total hell. I would feel bad for the baby, but war is war. Not the a-hole. It sounds like her staying there would violate the lease so she does not legally have the same right to the house as you do. Especially if her living there would put everyone's housing at risk. I'd give her a grace period to find new housing, but if she refuses, you have every right to go to your landlord slash management company. The lease on the new student house starts in July so she has a few months, and we are stuck with her till the end of the lease on our current student house. The next story. Am I the a-hole for asking my mom when she will be fully recovered? For context, my mom is in her late 40s and I'm 23. My mom had knee surgery a little over 7 months ago. She had a really hard time recovering and I moved back to her home for the first month to take care of her slash things around the house. I work remotely so I can stay really anywhere. My partner was very understanding, but he was certainly happy when I came back home to him. Every day since, my mom has called me to ask if I'll drive back home to do tasks for her, take out the trash, move a case of water. I live a little over an hour from her, so I'd usually ask if she'd get one of our neighbors to help as we're very close with them. For the following weeks, I'd go over every weekend to do tasks she had trouble completing. She just called me the other day with great news, her surgeon has pronounced her recovered. All limitations are removed. We celebrated on the phone for a minute, and she immediately follows this up with, but I'll need you to go to the grocery store for me because I still can't lift the bags myself. Confused, I asked why. And she said, it's still too hard on me. I asked her when she thought she'd be recovered from the surgery, and she got extremely upset. She told me that was a horrible thing to ask and I should have no problem helping her. I apologized and said I'd get the groceries, but she texted me later and said she cried for hours when we got off the phone. I'm just confused. The surgeon cleared her completely and said everything looks great. It's been half a year now, and my mom isn't elderly. I don't mind helping while I'm at her house for a visit, I don't mind at all. 
but I've spent nearly all my free time at her house helping out, and I'd like to know when I'll be able to resume my schedule once again. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your mother has become dependent upon you to do her tasks and that isn't right. It appears that there may be something else going on here. You mother may just want to spend more time with you. You need to have a conversation with her and see if it isn't the tasks she wants, but to spend more time with you. She may feel that the only way she can get to see you is to ask for your help and to have you do things for her. This could be due to the pandemic as her surgery was right in the middle of it. She could just be lonely. Talk to her and be clear that you still love her but you need to know what is going on. What is this? Empathy? On my Reddit? Not the a-hole. Look up codependent and seek professional guidance. Nip it in the bud before it makes all your lives hell. Yeah, I think you are right. This happened to me when my significant other had a slip disc. Eventually you gotta say no. You need to start being independent again. OP, I suggest writing to your mom and explaining how you can't help forever, especially with how far away you are, and she needs to look at a closer to home support network. She needs to start becoming independent again. Like go to the grocery store with a friend or neighbor. That way, she's building her way to it but with help. I say to it by text just because sometimes verbal communication goes sideways. Especially if she is upset. Edit, thank you all for the responses and perspectives. The most baffling thing to me about this post is the mixed bag of knee surgery anecdotes. I have people telling me their 70 year old grandma was back to normal in a month and a half. One comment down from that will heavily imply I'm delusional to expect any sort of recovery from my mom for less than two years after her surgery date. I guess it's truly a diverse recovery process. I'm going to talk to her and see if the pandemic is making her feel more lonely. She has plenty of friends and a rich social life, but I think she resents me moving out of the house and in with my partner. Maybe she just wants quality time just for the two of us, which is fair. But I need my life back. My partner and I have been planning so many big life things together that have been on the back burner for just a little too long at this point. Again, thanks all. The last story is titled. Am I the a-hole for refusing to participate in my boyfriend's family's bizarre orange tradition? My boyfriend and I have been together a while now but I hadn't met his family until a week ago when they invited us to stay at their house. I was very excited to meet his parents for the first time, and they were super sweet when I got there. Both of them are lovely people and we all got along well. They gave us free reign to do whatever, but the one thing they insisted on was that we join them for their tradition of eating oranges as a family on Saturday mornings. They grow their own oranges and have been doing this since my boyfriend was a kid, so he was especially thrilled to share the tradition with me as a rite of passage. So the morning came, and his mom brought in some fresh oranges from the garden. We sat at the table and I was getting ready to peel my orange when I saw my boyfriend's mom bite into her orange like it was an apple. With the peel still on. I was so stunned when I saw my boyfriend and his dad do the same thing with their oranges, as if it were totally normal. I guess they noticed my shock because they asked me why I wasn't eating. So, I started to peel my orange, but then his mom told me to stop, that I was eating it wrong and had to bite into it with the skin to get the full experience. I politely told her that I like to peel my oranges and I'm sure they taste just as great either way, but she kept insisting that I had to bite into my orange for tradition. After saying multiple times that I'd rather peel it in the family, including boyfriend, pushing back, I put the orange back on the table and said, though I appreciate the gesture, I personally feel uncomfortable eating oranges that way, and I'd rather not participate. Things were tense after that and we left the next day. When we got home, my boyfriend chewed me out for being rude and embarrassing him and his family. He said I should have just eaten the orange the right way since his parents were gracious to let me stay with them. I can see his point and I apologized for causing any hurt, I really do like his family and think they're great people, but stand by my decision to opt out of the orange tradition. He feels I could have compromised, and I feel that I should be able to eat things how I want. It's a silly squabble in the grand scheme of things. But my boyfriend and I are really at odds about who's in the wrong and would love an outside opinion. Edit, some people have been asking what kind of oranges slash whether they're actually oranges. All I can say is that, I was told they were oranges and they looked like typical oranges with thick skin. Now for the top comments. I like how we're all just calmly answering this like it isn't some crazy cartoon nonsense. Nobody eats oranges peel at all. I mean heck, they peel into individual sections that are damn near bite sized. I literally cannot imagine why you would do this in the first place. 
Have you considered the possibility that they are just messing with you? I don't know if I would be mad or impressed by the commitment. But for real. Not the a-hole. No one gets to tell you how to eat things. That's Looney Tunes. And your response was really respectful. Stand up for yourself. To be honest, I kinda thought they were messing with me at first, and was really surprised when they kept insisting. They seemed pretty serious. I'm fascinated with their dedication to the tradition, and wouldn't have minded hearing more about it if they hadn't tried to rope me in. I get the people who slice the orange first and then eat the peel, but seeing it eaten like an apple was surreal not gonna lie. It's a soft fruit. Didn't the juice just go everywhere? Also, did it all stay together? I feel like at a certain point it would have to fall apart unless you take bites in specific places. Did they eat all the way through the middle and just leave the top and bottom to throw out? I have so many goddamn questions about this it's going to haunt me. Edit, to be clear, I'm not 100% sure you're not messing with us. But if you are a troll, you are by far the most entertaining one I've dealt with, so I'm still here for it. It was as messy as you're probably imagining, and the oranges eventually ended up collapsing, and then they had to eat it in smaller chunks anyway. And lol, not a troll but I recognize that this situation is ridiculous enough for people to think that. Not the a-hole. Be glad you didn't stick around for the crab bake laughing my butt off. Not the a-hole, but when your boyfriend talked about this tradition, did he ever mention how they eat an orange differently than most of the world? Did he ever eat an orange outside of this tradition? I'm trying to figure why he didn't prep you more. He never ate oranges with me before this because he said they never measure up to his mom's oranges. He also never mentioned how his family eats it beforehand, which is why I was caught so off guard. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.